Hi folks, uh, I did this two, three or four years ago. Now it's quite a large one, it's 24 inches by 20. Work that out in metric, if you wish. Uh, I want to do something similar to that on a, on a smaller scale using knives. This is a knife painting. I'll, I won't do a copy of it, I'll just, just go through the various stages that, that I use for knife painting. I'm not an expert in it, I'd like to be. I prefer knife painting to any other form of painting. I absolutely love it. It's uh, very satisfying because you're, you're closer to the, to the support than if you had a brush. You're really close up to it and it's like, it's like um, plastering when you don't do it very often. If you don't do it for a job, it's very satisfying when it actually works. Icing a cake, pointing between stones in, a, in crazy paving. Now what I've got um, laid out here on my palette, you'll have to look on, on uh, Facebook to, to see a photo of it because my camera's set up in a particular way that I can't really change it. I've got cadmium yellow light and I've got um, uh, yellow ochre, cadmium red, ultramarine, burnt umber, burnt sienna and black. My basic palette for this. The uh, titanium white is a mixture of griffin, alkyd resin. This is a 200ml tube of uh, Winsor & Newton. It's, a, it's an alkyd resin based paint and it helps everything dry. And I mix it with the uh, with the Winton student quality Winter and Newton titanium white. I've got lots of enter tubes, there's a Georgian Mounty, uh, that's a student quality, flake white. I've got odds and ends of tubes that I've still got to squeeze out. I bought a lot of these uh, paints about 20 years ago. I'd be on when I, when I was doing rather well in the gallery and I could afford to, to lash out on loads of paint. Because even though I was painting for a market, I still used the student qualities, but one or two in the, in the burnt umber, I've got to squeeze out of that, burnt umber, uh, griffin, and the, the, the white, the titanium white. And that gets mixed in with all the other student quality colours and helps them to dry. And if you keep it warm, they'll be dry in a day or two. If you just use Griffin paints, then they are artist quality. They will dry overnight. They're pretty, pretty brilliant. And you can crack on with it. Um, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll do a rough, well, would I do a drawing? I'll do, I'll do a pencil drawing just to give her an idea of It's a sort of typical Cornish coastal uh, with a bit of bit of a uh, bit of background there. Um, I'll put it. I'll put in a bit of bit of landscape here. Get that headland from onto coming across there, then some distance. So typical Cornish landscape, and there's a bit of bit of rocky stuff here, and and, and the sea coming coming in here and going up to about there to the beach. Okay, that's all I need to do really. 
It's all going to be covered, covered up. Let's see if I can get a bit straighter there. Well, that'll do. You need plenty of tissue when you do this, and you need to cover your knees up with an apron. And I'm wearing a an artist's smock, which I shall roll down over my sleeves. It's all a messy business. This paint is not like watercolour that you can wash off. This stuff is dangerous in more ways than one. Right, knives I'm going to use is this uh, spatula type of hooked, crooked knife, good quality. If you, if you get into this, buy good knives. Don't buy chromium plated cheap stuff. These are stainless steel and they're quality. Wins for Newton, Rowney, they're all good and they've got a lovely spring. But over the, over the uh, years of using them, you will find that with all the scraping on pry and board, rough surfaces, they will get very sharp. And when you clean them with the cloth, with the cloth or with tissue, as I do, you can quite easily get your finger in the way and it will slice through your finger. These ones, that one is razor sharp and it's a bit, bit bent now because it's very old. So we'll put in a, I'll put in a, a quite a light coloured sky. I want to, I'll use a touch of, of um, well, what I'll do, I'll just clean off a bit of white spirit the centre of my pot. I'm using, what I do, I put a piece of grease, grease proof oven ready paper on a, like a, a board on my box easel, my travelling easel, yeah, it's not that portable, and I, I just clip a piece of grease proof paper to it, which uh, I can just roll up and throw away when I finish with it. It's just, Start off clean anyway, but my knife was carving through one sheet I used. So buy it, when you buy your tissue, buy, it, buy the largest roll you can get hold of. It's so like an industrial kitchen roll. Right, that should do. I should have done this first, but. Uh, I don't always think of what I should do at the time. Right, so I'm going to mix a bit of bit of uh, burnt sienna, but sorry, yellow ochre, the yellow ochre with a bit of black. And a load of load of white. Want this well mixed? You don't want want it streaky. Oh, it's just this is a bit of old uh, Fabriano that I did the demo on when I first started doing YouTube. When I was looking for subjects to do, And this was May 2013. I've, I've marked the mount that I shall show it in. And I, I'm, I, I, I just traced around, use it as a template. And I, you probably can't see there's, there's a pencil line. And I've put the tape just just on the outside of the pencil line, so that I don't have a lot of paint hanging around on the edges where I put it in the mount, where it would just ruin. Now, you don't worry about... Don't, don't, don't... Um, Flatten out all your nice marks, knife marks, it's like brush marks, that's your signature. But just, just put it on, just see how quickly you can cover. 
I think simplicity is the, is the key to all this. Where you, where you come up to your cliffs or your landscape, you want to cover it, but you, you want it thinnish so that it doesn't uh, merge too much with your trees or whatever you might want to put on there. Although we don't want hard edges really, quite hard not to get hard edges with this sort of painting, but. I'm going to put a little bit of black and a little bit of blue in there now. The black mixes very well with ultramarine and white to give a, a nice... Well, I'm not ready for that yet. up some more of that sky colour. So I, I can remix because I know more or less from experience how much I put in the last mix and I can approximate it. So I just want to just just get this on. Be prepared to use quite a lot of paint doing this. So if, the, if you feel so inclined to make a contribution to to this my Patreon channel to help pay for the materials, please feel free. It's, just, it's only a small amount of money. But it costs me quite a lot to do all this. And that goes for Alan Owen as well. I'm going to put some. Uh... Oh, I've gone over the uh, edge there. Right. I use a little smaller knife now. a bit of variety in the sky. Oops, sorry. I no, it's right. See, I took my eye off it to look and see what I've done to the camera and I nearly went through my finger. So let's get a bit of that grey. Put this sort of paint where you're a bit thin. Now, one little tip: when you do do this, whatever you're painting, take it off the screen. Otherwise, it looks as if you're trying just to fit it in. It's just some layers of cloud. Uh, 
uh, trying not to uh, repeat myself. I don't think this white will show too much. It's, the background's not that uh, different in contrast. Uh, a touch of touch of red in the sky, a touch of orange. warm it up a little bit. Just that little bit of colour Might look quite nice on the screen. You only really need to squeeze a lot of white out. Oh, just a little, just a little bit of colour. Catching a bit of light from the sun somewhere. Right, okay, well let's leave that. Go into the background now. So touch of touch of red, touch of blue, a bit of purpley blue, and then we'll mix that with a bit of a bit of um, white. Just get that background in. Ah, oh, just keep going. Sorry, sun, but you've got to go and get shining through. Might give me an idea to put a bit of a sun in something. Having these large loft windows. Gives me an opportunity to see skies, their sky effects. Soft. No hard edges. Who is wise? Gave up oil painting with uh, <coughs> solvents, I think. I think that. Uh, Top of the sky is just a little bit, a bit insipid, so I will just warm it up a little bit. Right. You can you can frame these by cutting a piece of hardboard, thin hardboard. Yeah, you know, the backing that you use in painting in in. in uh, watercolour mount and stick it with a PVA glue to, to the board and frame it as an oil or you can mount it behind so a double double cut mount behind glass. Uh, right let's get a slightly darker warmer This 
needs to be a contrast to to what's to that distant headland or whatever you want it to be. change the shape of that a little bit. Right, I hope that separates. Now, I'll, uh, I've got to carry this one across there and because I want the water to start around about here. So I'm going to put in some light green. Such a black in. I like mixing black in with my Just a little bit of light on, on that. And just a bit more black, or you can use burnt sienna, something like that, just to make a darker green. It's a bit darker. Just trying to get that bit more round there.
Right, now I've got to get a separation here between. So I'll put a uh, I'll go dark light there, I think. So a bit of ochre, a bit of white, catching, catching the light, counter change. Yeah. Now these paintings take a lot longer to do than watercolour, so I might even do this in two, two goes. Okay, well we're coming on there now. Just also screen. Right, now I want to darken up that uh, yellow. But if I do it in two parts, I can do it in three parts, but I can knit them together. I can edit them in the Windows Movie Maker, but it'll give you about an hour's video. Now you might like that. A lot of people won't. Just, just uh, as I think of things to do on this one. Just bring that, I'll get this cliff in here. I want to the grey now. Prime this with a bit of uh, PVA glue and and a bit of uh, burnt sienna. Right, 
it's just dark and like that so so it's light against dark light against dark all the time right we put a dark bluey grey Oh, let's get a bit of blue in there. Right, eh? Keep things colourful. And they little fix and flourishes. As you go along, well, I'm going to have a break now. Thanks for watching so far. Bye bye.